There's now some really cool mechanistic evidence that suggests that creatine could help with lowering blood sugar. This is super wild, especially in people that exercise a little bit. Because here's the deal, like 12 years ago, I was clinically diabetic. My fasting glucose was 144. So I understand that even then when I was active, it was still hard to get my glucose under control, which is a very real thing. Like there's a lot of people out there that are insulin resistant or dealing with diabetes that are still active. They still resistance train, but it's a struggle to get their glucose levels down. Full disclaimer, before we get into the nitty gritty of this, this is not designed to replace any kind of medical information or anything like that. It's newer research that I think would be foolish to disregard. And I'm gonna tell you flat out what the compound is, but I still want you to watch this video because it's really going to teach you how much to use and why it's working. We're talking about creatine. Now, after today's video, if you are interested, I put a link down below for a company called Create. They make creatine monohydrate gummies in one gram gummy form. So it's really nice because personally, I don't like to take five grams. I don't like to take more than that. Uh, and I like to be able to microdose sort of in sort of a way, like I'll take like one gram, two gram, three grams, and having little gummies makes it really, really easy. The whole idea behind Create is they want to get rid of the stigma behind creatine. Creatine is not just for building muscle, it's not just for strength, it's an energy building supplement, and that's the whole idea behind it. So they've really destigmatized it and done a really good job there. That link down below gets you 20% off if you use code TDL20. So 20% off your entire order using code TDL20. So no more TSA, like looking at mysterious white powders in your bag. You just have nice, easy gummies. So they're super easy to travel with. They're non-GMO, they're keto friendly. And what's really cool is that they are third-party tested and 80% of people that have used them say that within six weeks, they notice body composition changes as well. So anyway, that link is down below. Let's get into the science. One of the ways that glucose is lowered in our body is through what is called GLUT4. GLUT4 is something that grabs glucose out of the bloodstream and brings it in to the cell. Okay, it brings it in. So if GLUT4 didn't exist, it would be very difficult for glucose to get into our cell to ever be used. There's other transporters, but GLUT4 is really the one that we talk about the most because it is uh, insulin mediated. So when insulin increases a little bit, it allows this to happen. Now, what happens in people that don't have a lot of GLUT4 or have low GLUT4 density or poor what is called GLUT4 translocation is they produce GLUT4, but not a lot. So even when they start exercising or when they uh, were to eat some carbohydrates, maybe they only have a few pieces coming up. And these are these transport mechanisms. Well, what we're seeing in the research now is that creatine actually increases the GLUT4 translocation. Now it doesn't just increase the translocation. It doesn't just increase the amount that come to the surface of the cell, but it also increases the amount in general. So you have more sort of almost like nets, nets that reach into the bloodstream to grab glucose and they come to the edge of the cell. So you have more of them and then you also have more that are already translocating. So what this does is it acts as glucose disposal. Now who would have thought that creatine had this effect? Now why would creatine do this? Well, creatine and carbohydrates actually work quite well together. Okay, they both require sodium-dependent uh, glucose trans or sodium-dependent transporters, sodium-dependent glucose transporter, s 1 sodium-dependent creatine transporter. It's a little bit beside the point. The point is, is a lot of times when you look at creatine supplements, you see they're actually combined with carbohydrates because one helps the other a little bit. But in the case of someone that's maybe insulin resistant, you didn't wanna add extra carbs. Like that wouldn't be a good advantageous move for you. But what we do see in the literature is that one of the ways that creatine helps performance is because of this. It draws more carbohydrates into the actual muscle. And when there's more carbs in the muscle, you have more what is called glycogen. And this glycogen stays in the muscle. And then when you work out, you pull energy from the glycogen. So creatine is commonly like miscategorized as like this steroid-like compound that just gives you brute strength. It does give you strength in those first couple of reps, the first couple feet of a sprint, but because it helps carbohydrates shuttle to the right spot, it potentially helps you maintain higher intensity for a longer period of time. So it's great for two reasons. One, it's drawing glucose out of the bloodstream, glucose disposal, lowering your glucose, huge effect. 
but then it's also giving you a performance boost and allowing you to use those carbohydrates in your muscle more effectively while you are working out. So a double whammy effect. Now, first of all, I wanna talk about how much you should consider taking, and then I wanna talk about another reason why it's beneficial for people that are insulin resistant. I don't think you need to go and take five, six, seven grams. I just don't. I think the benefits start at like one to two grams, especially for simple uh, nootropic effects, right? So start with maybe two grams. And if you're worried about gaining water weight, I don't think you're gonna deal with that at two grams. It's just not a big deal. Also, the research suggests that water weight tends to go away after the first couple of weeks. I also don't think you need to do a loading phase like people suggest and brands suggest. I don't think it's necessary, especially when you're using it for glucose modulation. Now, most people aren't getting enough creatine from their diet. Okay, studies have suggested that we need about, I don't know, two to four grams or so from our diet, and we're definitely not getting that. Considering there's only like one to two grams of creatine per pound of red meat or salmon, we're probably not getting that. That being said, let's talk about how it can also help someone that's insulin resistant. If you are potentially dealing with a blood sugar issue because you're insulin resistant, the mitochondria, especially in your brain, can be somewhat starved of glucose because they are glucose tolerant. You're unable to get the glucose into the brain cell very well. This could cause cognitive decline and you may not even realize it. Creatine can donate some energy, ATP, for those cells to function, independent of your glucose intolerance. What that means is you're providing your brain with sort of a backdoor way of having energy without having to rely on glucose as much. This makes it extremely advantageous for two types of people. The person that has poor glucose metabolism in their brain or the low carb person that is concerned with not having enough fuel for the brain. It solves both of those situations. So although I'm not a doctor and I don't wanna say this is good for diabetics or anything like that, I can safely say that if you're trying to lower your glucose and you're trying to live a more active lifestyle and you're trying to take positive steps forward, you're best off to not demonize creatine, potentially try it in a low dose. It could be very, very helpful. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.